Welcome to WYCD Wicket. That stands for What You Can Do. I'm recording this as a uh, as a members only stream because I'm not entirely sure I'm I'm even going to release it. But if I do, I'll release it as a premiere, and I'll be there watching it with you. I just want to talk about some thoughts I had regarding Mike Pence, Walt Nauta, and Stewie Griffith. I see a through line here that I think we should probably discuss in some form. Let's take a whack at it now. We'll see how we do. First up, Mike Pence. Mike Pence does not understand uh, why MAGA happened. He gets the basics of Republicans. He understands that you need uh, to appeal to uh, uh, stated principles, which are not actually held, like uh, believing in the Constitution. Uh, without actually having any understanding of what's in it, much like how most of those folks uh, handle the Bible. No real understanding of what's in it, no real comprehension, um, but using it as a justification to do the things that, they, that, that make them feel good in the moment, and often that hurt them in the long term. I think I do understand where MAGA came from. And that's a mighty bold thing to say. But, truth be told, I think I do understand. Uh, because it, it came from the same place uh, where, that my own political beliefs came from. It, they just went in a different direction. But it came from the same place. It came from an outrage at the inequality of American life. And if it, if it seems like that's picking up steam around the world, this sort of um, commitment to ignorance, this sort of uh, destructive politics, it's because people all around the world are starting to feel this, as neoliberal policies are running their inevitable course. We've measured this already. We've seen it. We just saw it with other countries, and we were all, truly, you're going to have to brace yourself, we were all a little bit racist, or at least a little bit nationalist. We thought these other countries are acting this way under neoliberal policy, even if we didn't have the words neoliberal, but the policies we forced upon them through coups and through uh, uh, propaganda, uh, through our end of the Cold War, uh, they're behaving this way, they're, they're going so badly because they are other countries and not because the policies don't work. The great irony is that the U.S. adopted neoliberal policies later than other countries that it forced to adopt these policies. You know, the ones that say big business is right no matter what and, uh, and money... Trump's uh, uh, regulation. Well, we're, we're suffering through that. And the reaction to that suffering on the MAGA side uh, was, was Donald Trump. And we had, we had a reaction to it. We had an excitement that it might end eight years earlier with Barack Obama. When, when change was promised, and the, the disappointment when he didn't provide it. Why? Because he was vague. We should have known from the start he was vague about what he would do. He didn't specifically say what he would change. Now, credit where it's due, he tried to give us health care. And God help us, Republicans killed it. They made it a worse version than it could have been, than it was intended to be. They did their best to bungle the execution. And Democrats helped them bungle it. Because Democrats don't need much encouragement to screw up. But then we got Trump. 
another person who promised change, and he promised changed, uh, change by destruction. And all he provided was the destruction, and not the change. Mike Pence does not understand that. He does not understand the populist end of MAGA. And that's the most important part of it. That's where the passion comes from. These are people that have been told for their whole lives that their problems are caused by minorities. But their problems include the fact that they are treated differently than rich people. So when he says what he's about to say in the clip I'm going to play from David Pakman, understand why that is going to sour MAGA voters to him. Let's have a look. says he is, quote, inclined to pardon many members of the mob who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Those people were, of course, part of the same mob who built gallows and chanted about wanting to hang you. Right. Would you consider pardoning, pardoning any of them? You know, on the day of January 6th, I issued a tweet demanding that people leave the Capitol. Folks, he tweeted. And end the violence. And I said that those that failed to do Real quick, if I could just pop in first. Um, I think we're going to enter an era of politics where that kind of response gets cut off by boos. Uh, as in booing. I, I, I hope we enter that era. I'm going to try to encourage us to enter that era. She asked him a straightforward question. Now, I don't think you have to give a one-word answer. I think it's silly to demand that. But he starts with this whole preamble. Boo! Boo, boo, boo. Answer the question. Are you going to pardon these people? Yes, here's why. No, here's why. I don't know. Here's why. Some, but not all. Here's why. Answer the question. Straightforward. And then, and then justify it. Then do your dance if you got a dance to do. But the dance alone ain't going to cut it anymore. But he does eventually get around to an answer. It's, it's, and, it, and it shows um, exactly why MAGA will not be voting for him. That should be prosecuted. To the and it's not, for the record. It's not because he didn't uh, betray the country on January 6th. You'll see. The extent of the law. Right. And I continue to believe that today. We cannot ever allow what happened on January 6th to happen again in the heart of our democracy. What about the And question? I'll stand by the decisions and the due process of court in our laws. And uh, I, I have no interest or no intention pardoning those that, that assaulted police officers or vandalized our capital. All right. Now, understand that even there, he's saying he has no interest in pardoning those who assaulted police officers or vandalized the capital. But if there are people who were charged for other things, he doesn't seem to be ruling that out. Although with Pence, you never really know what he means with his slippery language. And then lastly, Pence refusing to rule out pardoning Donald Trump if he were to be elected president. Sir, if Donald Trump... And as David Pakman pointed out at the end, ruining my surprise, uh, he does not refuse to pardon Donald Trump. I'll tell you, and this might shock you, I think he would have won over more MAGA voters if he would have said, Law and order, what I believe in. Will I pardon Trump? No. Will I pardon the MAGA people? Who, uh, will I pardon the rioters, rather? No. 
Now he could have he could have tried to be nice to them. You shouldn't. These are a bunch of traitors. But he could have tried to be nice. He could have been. I I understand why they did what they did. I understand the feelings. But we are a nation of laws, not feelings. And uh, I, I will not be pardoning anyone who broke the law. So if it's established in court that either of these people, including the former president, broke the law, then no, they will not get a pass from me just because of my political party. He would have earned their respect at the very least. But he didn't. What did he say? He said, I will pardon the henchmen and not... Excuse me, I will, I will make... Uh, uh, the henchmen go to prison and not the boss. Or rather, I will spare the boss but not the henchmen. And isn't that just it? Isn't that just the main issue at hand? Even out of the world of, of criminal justice, I mean, it's obvious in the courts that rich people, the elites, as as MAGA loves to say, uh, they they get an easier time of it. But it's true in life too. It's true every day. Guy driving a sports car gets a speeding ticket for driving eighty miles over the speed. Love Jesus Christ, that's way too fast. Uh, 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 Fifteen miles an hour over the speed limit. Guy driving a beat up. Rust Bucket drives 15 miles over the speed limit. It costs them the same. Except the person driving the sports car, to them, that's a a, 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 a one hundredth of one percent of their income for the year. Whereas the other guy, it's one percent of his income for the year. A massive difference. The laws are set up currently where it is harder to be the employee than the boss, and people are feeling it. And Mike Pence getting out there and saying, I, I, I will consider pardoning Trump. I will not consider <laughs> pardoning the rioters. It shows that he does not understand the people he was trying to please by saying, he would spare Trump. He just thinks they like this guy, so I'll be nice to this guy. And then he was trying to please... He was trying to please uh, sane people by saying, I'm not going to spare the rioters. The opposite would have been a better bet if he was going to try to split those hairs, but frankly, it comes down to people that believe the laws are the laws and people who believe... Uh, that uh, might makes right. And who would prefer that we live in the kind of system where you simply pick winners and losers based on who you're vibing with. You will not be able to appeal to both of those groups because we are fundamentally opposed to each other in that regard. So on that, on that issue, you will simply not be able to appeal to both those groups. And it has to be... It has to be noted. Mike Pence doesn't have it. Why am I spending so much time on Mike Pence? Well, I happen to think that Uh, that is a great window. That failure of Pence is a is a great window into the soul of uh, Jack Smith and the reasoning behind the conspiracy charges with Walt Nauta. Let's look at uh, something I saw recently. It's all in with Chris Hayes. And uh, they're talking about Talking about uh, why a conspiracy charge and, and, and what Jack Smith might have been thinking, what, what the strategy behind it might have been. I think they're right. It's Lawrence O'Donnell that brings up the point. 
So let's have a quick look at that. Ooh, mercy. There we go. So rich and had so much power. The two men are going to be in a courthouse Together. standing next to yeah. each other like the Home Alone burglars right. that, on Tuesday that's morning. Huge, that, that's an additional legal problem for Donald Trump, because if he were a standalone defendant, I actually think he'd be in a better position yes, he doesn't have sure. when and if sentencing comes around. Sure. Because this guy... People have gone to prison for what this guy has yeah. done. Oh, yeah. And and the idea that, like, well, there is no principle that says, oh, no, no, you can't convict a Navy veteran of a, of a crime. <laughs> you know, all of this yes, kind of right. mythology that surrounds the notion of convicting Correct. a former yeah. president. So I actually think them having a co-defendant in there who is, by all previous, you know, legal precedent, completely vulnerable to serious criminal sentencing here is actually very helpful. Rachel. Such a good point. Such a good point. And the reality being, we really only pretend to have uh, the system of, of beliefs that we profess. Like, for example, no one is above the law, and yet we're sitting here hemming and hawing over how we're going to make the laws apply to a former president. Ooh, but that's a real fancy guy. Oh, but he's rich. Ah, oh, but a lot of folks like him. I don't know if we can make the laws apply to him. But as Lawrence O'Donnell points out, Jack Smith, being not a dummy, has gotten around that in a, in a uh, brilliant way. First of all, he's not accusing Walt Nauta or at least according to the indictment, he's not attempting to accuse Walt Nauta of anything he was not knee-deep in. But he is charging him alongside Trump, as if to say, this guy did this thing, we got him dead to rights. And you decide how much he broke the law, whether he broke the law and by how much and if you're going to punish him. And oh, by the way, this guy told him to do it. Now, if you're going to punish that guy, who obviously broke the law, who we got pictures of, who we got text messages from, who we have written statements from, who lied to the face of the FBI, you're going to punish him. Surely, surely, you are going to punish the person that told him to do the crime, who was the primary beneficiary of the crime. And if not you, the U.S. Court of Law, you're going to have to declare and set the precedent that truly a former president is above the law. And I don't think we want that. And ain't it the truth? It's a clever move. By Jack Smith. And even if MAGA hates him right now, and even if the stochastic terrorism Fox is engaged in currently works, and they get some lone wolf terrorists out there to uh, kill people and themselves in their zeal to prevent. Uh, Trump from being harmed by the consequences of his own actions to spare Trump the justice system the ass whipping he's been asking for even if that happens I think by the end of this case playing into that right sense of aggrievement, uh, aggrievement that correct sense of outrage at at the uh, at the ridiculous double standards where normal people must always suffer and they must suffer more to spare rich people from any suffering ever 
uh, playing to that is going to make it so that MAGA voters have a better chance of understanding that Trump broke the law and he ought to be punished. The, the only question left is why in the first place? Why do they believe? Like right now, why do we have to worry about uh, lone wolf terrorists? Why at all? Why, why wouldn't they just wait to see? Why did they do what they did on January 6th? Why do we have so many people uh, in, in, in prison whose lives are forever ruined? You know, you would think there's going to be some deep philosophy here. There's not. Here's why. Because this is the cause. Hey, Stewie, what are you watching? The most glorious website of all time, YouTube. I really hope the site doesn't run out of content for me to watch. You know, you should really be careful on YouTube, Stewie. You never know what's going to pop up next. I mean, there's some wild stuff out there. Okay, boomer. I'm not a boomer. I'm Gen X. Brian, you save back issues of oh, Costco magazine. Uh, it's called the Costco Connection, and it's how I get good deals on cruises. Yeah, you're not helping yourself here. Let's see. Suggested videos for you. Joe Rogan interviews Boss Baby. Good Night Moon. Fact or hoax? Whoa, listen to this one, Rupert. The truth about naps. I hate naps, and I love the truth. On March 7, 1999, a resistance took place at Treehouse Daycare in Atlanta, Georgia, that would expose the truth about nap time forever. Harold Harry Brockmeyer, age three, refused to nap. He was not tired as he had slept 16 hours the previous evening. In fact, after lunch, he made a finger painting that to this day still hangs on his parents' refrigerator. Well, holy The fact is, naps only exist for the oppression of young children and as a scam to give parents time to themselves. <sighs> Could it be true? Oh, I must get to the bottom of this like a hard-nosed police detective. Jenkins, I'm taking you off this murder. Yeah, it's a comedy bit, but it's not wrong. All the elements are right there. Somebody making a big damn deal about something that is not true, but they know a demographic wants to hear. For a lot of these folks, they want to hear that the problem was Mexicans the whole time. And that, oh, those Democrats are, are just, they're stopping us from being as cruel as we need to be to all these Mexicans in order to save ourselves. Oh, those darn Democrats, they're, they're stopping us from, from being as cruel as we need to be to all those gays in order to somehow fix everything. Ah, oh, they're stopping us from being... As cruel as we need to be to all those Muslims, all those black people, all those trans folks, all those, I don't know, what's it going to be tomorrow? All those Eskimos. This right here is an attempt to fix that. Hopefully it'll help. There's other bigger, frankly, uh, uh, purposes for this channel. But, you know, there's one goal, is to try to debunk some of this stuff. But also, uh, the collective effort to reach out to these folks, which is going to be done, and I don't want to lie to you, mostly by you and folks like you. It's going to be done on a person-to-person -person basis. It's going to be one at a time. Mostly that's what's going to fix it. 
you're going to have to go to the Stewies in your life and tell them baby truth or whatever lied to you. And you're going to have to show them how, and you're going to have to be more mature and kind than they will have deserved with their behavior. You're going to have a big advantage in that Donald Trump is about to be in court. Nothing uh, but a bullet he fires will prevent him from from going there. Uh, he's about to be in court. The, the truth is going to be coming out. And by the way, we have not forgotten about January 6th. We should continue to insist that that is litigated in court. It would not surprise me if Merrick Garland uh, sees this conviction on the documents case and then tries to dodge his responsibility for January 6th and finding justice there. That is not acceptable. Anyone who tries to tell you, well, it's hard to build a case, stop. I don't care. We are the United States of America. We walked on the mothering moon. We are going to prove in a court of law that Donald Trump tried his damnedest to overthrow the government. And when all these things happen, we're going to have to go to the Stewie Griffins in our lives, show them the facts. And we're going to have to go a step farther. We're going to have to provide them the answer they've been looking for. Who has actually been making their lives hard? If all these folks have been lying to them, that it was the Democrats, that it was the Mexicans, that it was the Eskimos, if all these folks have been lying to them, well, who has been making their lives hard? Because I notice... They always say, you guys pretend like white people have it easy, but we don't. The fact is, we don't pretend like white people have it easy. White people definitely have it easier. But, we don't pretend like white people have it easy. But we are going to have to acknowledge that they're hurting. Again, even if they haven't earned kindness, kindness is a necessary part of the formula for fixing this. We're going to have to acknowledge that they're hurting and show them who has actually been doing the hurting. Easy way to show them, show them that chart we play on this channel so frequently. I'll do it next week, uh, just, to, just to keep it fresh in your minds. Shows the U.S. productivity versus U.S. average income. Productivity skyrockets. Income does not rise accordingly. Show uh, that the billionaires profited during the pandemic when we were all suffering. Show that U.S. has uh, the worst health care of all nations measured when we measured the top 11 most uh, financially successful whatever nations. Our quality of life has been uh, sold by our representatives two billionaires who exchanged it for money. So show them who really hurt them. Understand that they are acting out of uh, pain and fear and outrage and direct their outrage. This has been WYCD Wicked. That stands for what you can do. My name's Jake.